Well, what do we have here? My beautiful one, sitting here on the bed, all by their lonesome. Interesting. I was just looking for you to let you know that dinner was ready. But now, I'm curious. Hmm? What's that? Oh, we're gonna play hard to get now, huh? That only makes me more interested, you know. But, let's go sit and eat, hmm? The food will get cold. Of course I remember what you like. You've been together a few months, doll. I've learned a lot about you, not least your preferences for meals. I do cook for you at least once a day. Here, I hope you like it. Of course, but while we're here, I've noticed that something's been troubling you recently, my dear. My tea is a lot, my beautiful one, but I'm not one to let you carry on with something weighing you down. Your emotions seem very conflicted. You look split down the middle, doll. Speak your mind. I see. I feared that that was troubling you. I was waiting for you to say something, dear, before I talked about it. The incident in the throne room that night is far more nuanced than you realize, my dear, especially with what I've learned since. I know you were apprehensive, my dear, when you were ordered to take my head. Your former companions were not. You have something that most hunters lack, and all. A sense of morality. And with that, you recognize the humanity in us. Your silver blade killed with discretion, striking down those who'd killed the innocent, who'd cultivated fear in the unwitting masses. And that fact only endeared you to me more. Your impromptu companions had no such qualms. They murdered indiscriminately, striking down innocent vampires who'd never touched a human with the same righteous zeal as they'd kill a target of yours. I saw the look in their eyes, the equipment they carried, how vehemently they refused to negotiate, even when their leader looked torn. When I eliminated them, I likely spared a few of my innocent brethren, and by leaving no survivors to tell of it, I gave the kingdom a heavy reminder. Do not send your young fighters to die in fights they cannot win, which, even the not insignificant number of vampires approaching my power level, my hope is that it saves many lives like yours. Of course. I was thinking about showing you the garden later. But first, I must confess, I'm curious what you were doing in the bedroom. Oh, come on. Surely it isn't too embarrassing to share. If it is, then it must be truly scandalous. <laughs> This tough act you put up is adorable, my beautiful one. Oh, you evil dog. It's nothing. Just nothing. Why would you think I was doing anything embarrassing, you idiot? And it's also easy to see through. Too over-exaggerated. And the blush doesn't help. Oh. 
Oh, quit, beautiful. You're especially feisty today. Has something happened? Well, you were sitting on my side of the bed. So that means something's not normal. You normally avoid my side of the bed like it would shock you if you touched it. Yet, there you sat, against my pillows. <laughs> they felt good, didn't they, doll? Mmm. Quiet as a mouse now, hmm? Where's that feisty attitude from a few seconds ago, my dear? There you go again, with the name-calling. But if I'm truly so evil and vile, why were you sniffing my pillow? Of course I saw. In fact, I was watching for a good few minutes. That blush is intoxicating. My pretty one, you can't hide it anymore. Not after that. You've been here for months, ever since I captured you. I've treated you so well. Never required anything of you. Yet, never missed a chance to tease you. And you, despite desperately trying to hide it, seem to enjoy it. I mean, you love the meals I cook. You never truly protest my teasing. Now, I find you, sitting against my pillows on my side of the bed. Gently caressing my crest on your neck, with a sheepish smile on your face. I saw it all, my dear. I've seen everything, from the beginning. I saw how you would blush and smile when I gently shook you to wake you for breakfast. How you'd silently maneuver yourself to get more compliments and how your insults became comically over-exaggerated, so thin that even you had to know you were faking it. Oh, now, now, walking off in a melodramatic huff. But where are you walking? Towards the bedroom? And after a slight hesitation, you fall right into the place you were, Back against my pillows. That crest doesn't affect your mind, my beautiful one. Those feelings are all natural, and it's hard to deny them for long. But, doll, you're right about one thing. I'm one evil dog. A creature of the night, who just carried you away to my quarters. A dastardly man who kept you as his own. Yet here you are, basking in my scent, reverently feeling my mark. Is this beautiful damsel really in distress? Of course not. I know your type. You've hunted my kind for years, but it's the forbidden fruit that tastes the sweetest, doll. And when you found out that I was gentle and kind to you, that forbidden fruit became too sweet to resist, my beautiful one. Oh, so wrong. Oh, so devious. But it's oh so right, my dear. The minders are gone. And this fruit has no thorns. Don't starve yourself, my dear. Why don't you take my hand, beautiful one? Pluck this fruit from its tree.
<laughs> Didn't expect me to pull you into my lap, hmm? Oh, doll. The forbidden fruit has no thorns. But I said nothing about spice. But you haven't tasted this fruit yet. Let me fix that, my dear. How does it taste, doll? Better than dinner, huh? Blushing, looking down and away. That's okay. I'll just take my finger and turn you back towards me until our eyes meet. My dear, sweet, beautiful doll, you're all mine. I stole you. And with this saccharine yet spicy forbidden fruit, I'll steal your heart, your mind, your soul, and you'll be mine forever. Now, you've had your dinner. How about a sweet dessert? I love you, my sweet little doll. <laughs>